My mission is getting people to love working with their hands so that they can become makers and fixers. And why is that? Because humans of all ages just light up when they learn to work with their hands. It gives them incredible happiness and fulfillment. And it's also because we're on the brink of a really weird thing. We're on the brink of an unprecedented worldwide shortage of skilled workers. So Canada alone, by like in the next seven years, will be short a million skilled workers. So, you know, if you think you might need a plumber after 2020, um, now might be a good time to start learning to unclog your own toilet. <laughs> so, why the shortage? It's really hard to get into a toilet. I took um, lessons from that girl with the hula hoops. So. Anyway, so why the shortage of skilled workers? The baby boomers are retiring, and normally that wouldn't be a problem, except that for the past few generations, we have pressured our kids into careers where they work with their minds, not with their hands. Um, maybe this happened to you. Uh, it happened to me. Uh, when I was in grade nine, my dad inherited some money, so we were getting an in-ground pool. And the backhoe driver arrived, and I, I couldn't take my eyes off him. The way he maneuvered those levers and rocked his little bucket, it was just magic. <laughs> so I knew what my career would be, <laughs> backhoe operator. And unfortunately, my parents um, didn't want me going into construction. I think they found it a little embarrassing, actually. Um, they wanted me to have a university education. So there I was, 13, and already my career prospects were dashed. I think you can kind of see it in my yearbook photo. How's that? <laughs> That's what dashed career hopes look like. <laughs> so, why did this happen to me? Well, there's a stigma in our culture. People who enjoy working with their hands are seen by many, and this often includes their own parents, as not being as intelligent as people who work at desk jobs or who go into professions or, you know, work at CERN. <laughs> so I think <laughs> that I can explain why this stigma exists, and in the next five minutes, I'm going to try to prove that creativity and intelligence evolved because we know how to work with our hands. So first, a little background. If you're human, you have been handy for about 2.5 million years. And your first do-it-yourself project, I've included free plans, <laughs> was whacking two rocks together so that one would splinter off a little bit. And now you had a, f a sharp flake that you could use to scrape that greasy animal hide that you'd been keeping for a new front door. OK, so we actually. Yeah, I know. We did. So we actually evolved using our hands to improve our shelters because better shelters meant healthier babies. So we have this very intense genetic drive to uh, improve our living environments. But nowadays, we have fewer and fewer people who actually have the ability to, to do the work. But that's not quite true, because I believe we're all born with the home improvement gene. So if you need proof, <laughs> how many of you built blanket forts when you were little? <laughs> yeah, OK, keep your hand up, keep your hand up. What about cardboard box forts? OK, anybody build a tree fort? OK, leave your hand up if you already built the other kinds of forts. OK, how about the Canadian classics? No for it. Yeah! OK, see, look at all the hands. I proved it. OK, so I'm going to give you two ways to tell whether that home improvement gene is still glimmering somewhere in your DNA sequence. So one, 
when you're making something, you completely lose track of time. Two, if you try to talk while you're working with your hands, your work tends to be a little sloppy. <laughs> Ikea. So studies show that when you're watching someone perform an activity, your brain activates in the same ways as if you were actually performing the activity. Uh, you don't have to believe me, but just watch as I cut this juicy lemon into quarters and raise this little section of juicy lemon to my lips and <laughs> I really did it, look. So who felt their cheeks have a little twinge? <laughs> you see, it's so cool. You did not actually perform the suckage and yet your brain <laughs> I know. So let me give you a better example. Researchers at Emory University in Atlanta put people into functional MRI scanners, and they were trying to test which areas of the brain would light up when the subject watched video of someone sculpting with their hands um, a Stone Age tool. And what they found out from the, the sculpting video is that one particular part of the brain really lit up watching that sculpting video. And that area is called Broca's area. Now, Broca's area is kind of cool because it's also responsible for um, creating complex sentences. So it does two jobs that uh, require abstract sequential thought. One, when we're using our vocabulary to construct complex sentences. And two, when we're using our hands to create complex forms. So this led the researchers to think, OK, and they, they actually proposed this, that unless we had used our hands to create tools, we may never have developed language. OK, that's when it hit me. All of a sudden, I knew why we think that people that work with their hands aren't very clever. Are you with me? <laughs> OK, don't worry. I can explain. OK, now this is my completely unscientific theory, but here goes for what it's worth. You say you're building a rock wall. So you're searching through your working pile for the next stone to perfectly fit. Your Broca's area is completely rammed with all these shapes and profiles of all the rocks that you, you've got in your working pile. And just then, someone comes up and says, hey there, you know, uh, buddy, what you exactly doing there? Which always happens, right? Well. Your Broca's area is already maxed out. You don't have enough free neurons to start com creating complex sentences. So <laughs> you look at them blankly, you maybe grunt, and you go back to selecting your next rock. <laughs> right, so the person who asks the question looks at you like you're dumb as a pail of hair. And you multiply that incident by hundreds of thousands of years, and you have a pretty good idea why we have a deep prejudice that people that work with their hands are a six pack short of a two four. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's just test this together just for fun. And I'm going to run a little long, but I think it's kind of important. I'm going to light up your Broca's area. Don't worry, it won't hurt by carving something, okay? Oh, and just as a bonus, I was a little worried because, you know, everybody has these cool props and Chris with his robot. So this morning I knitted a replica of the human brain. <laughs> I know. Thank you. The real piss poor little Sarah Bellum down here in this. But anyway, I did my best, and I knitted it out of conductive fibers, so <laughs> naturally it forms a neural interface so that when I put it on my head, I will be able to, um, act, you'll be able to track my own Broca's area activity. Oh, where did I put my, oh, all right, so I'm going to carve this spatula that I've been working on, it's got some issues, but I'm going to keep working on it because, you know. It could, could be good eventually. So as I'm carving, I'm going to have to stop talking because I'm doing sloppy work. 
So with any luck, you'll see my Broca's area start to <laughs> Now that your broker's area is excited as mine, please turn to the person next to you and say something complex. Go. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, this also makes an attractive accessory for a neuroscientist you might know. And it's also a classic Canadian toque. So how do we get more people to become makers and skilled tradespeople? And why do I care? Well, when I teach little kids to work with their hands, they're on fire. They, they are voracious designers and builders, every single kid, no exceptions. And they're learning coordination and creativity and critical thinking skills all while they're having fun. So what's not to love? And when you think of it, so much creativity comes, it's connected to our hands. A writer writes, an architect sketches, you know, uh, a musician strums or strikes or fingers an instrument, a scientist calculates. It, it all is so connected to our hands. And you know those young people who f they're fidgety and they can't sit still in, in school? You know, they, most of them will calm right down if you give them some work to do with their hands. These kids are our artists. They're our, our tradespeople, our innovators. They feel the drive to make so keenly. Why aren't we giving them hands-on opportunities to be the creators that they are? Why do we punish them for their restlessness or medicate them or maybe the most damaging of them of all is we, we tell them they're not smart. And if you're one of those people and it doesn't matter what age and you know deep down that you're a maker, remember this. It's never too late to become who you might have been. Thank you. <laughs>